Chapter 45 In the Field of Music Late that afternoon, Lysias invited me to accompany him to the Field of Music. You should enjoy yourself a little, Andre, he said with kindness. Seeing that I was reluctant, he said, I'll talk to Tobias. Narcissa herself has taken the day off. Let's go. However, I perceived an odd inner phenomenon. In spite of my very few days on the job, I was already dedicating much love to those chambers. Minister Genesio's daily visits, Narcissa's company, Tobias's inspiring presence, and the camaraderie of my fellow workers had all spoken deeply to my spirit. Narcissa, Salsustio, and I spent all our leisure time improving the place here and there and easing the situation of the patients, whom we loved with all our hearts, as though they were our own children. Taking my newness at my position into account, I approached Tobias, to whom Lysias spoke with respectful familiarity. Tobias assented to Lysias's request and was quite willing to allow me to go. Great idea. Andre needs a visit to the field of music and embraced me. Take your time. Enjoy it. Come back tonight whenever you like. We have plenty of workers for now. I gratefully followed Lysias. When we arrived at his home in the Ministry of Assistance, I had the pleasure of seeing Laura again. She informed me that Eliosa's selfless mother would be returning from the planet the following week. The house was filled with joy. Things appeared even more beautiful inside the house, and there were new arrangements in the garden. As we took our leave, Laura embraced me good-naturedly and said, So, from now on in the colony, we will have one more visitor to the field of music. Watch out for your heart. As for me, I'll be staying home today. I'll get back at you, though, pretty soon. It won't be long before I'm looking for my nourishment down on earth. Amidst everyone's joy, we went out into the street. The two young women of the household accompanied Polidaro and Estacio, with whom they were talking excitedly. Soon after we got off the airbus on one of the squares of the Ministry of Elevation, Lysias said affectionately, At last you are going to meet my fiance. I've already told her a lot about you. It's interesting, I observed, intrigued, that there are couples who are engaged here, too. And why wouldn't there be? Does sublime love live in the mortal body or in the eternal soul? There, in the terrestrial sphere, love is like a sort of gold hidden among rough stones. But people so often mix it with their needs, desires, and lower tendencies that one can rarely distinguish the slag from the precious metal. His observation was logical. Noticing the beneficial effect of his explanation, he continued, Betrothal is far more beautiful in the spirit world. There are no veils of illusion to obscure our sight. We are who we are. Licinia and I failed many times in past physical experiences, and I must confess that almost all of the disasters of the past were caused by my imprudence and absolute lack of self-control. The freedom that the social laws of the planet grant the male sex has not yet been fully understood. Rarely do any of us use such freedom in the world to work on our spiritualization. Most of the time we convert it into a descent towards animalism. Women, on the other hand, have until now had the advantage of the strictest discipline. In their transitory life, they have suffered under our tyranny and have borne the burden of our impositions. In the spirit world, however, our values get readjusted. We are only really free when we learn to obey. It seems like a paradox, but it's an expression of the truth. So, do you have any new plans for the physical plane? I inquired. Of course, he was quick to explain. It couldn't be otherwise. I must enrich the treasury of my experiences, and furthermore, my debts on the planet are still enormous. Lacinia and I will build our little home of happiness here very soon, and I believe we will finally return to Earth in about 30 years. At that moment, we arrived at the field of music. Lights of indescribable beauty bathed the large park, which displayed the enchantment of a real fairy tale. 
luminous fountains formed amazing designs, a spectacle absolutely new to me. Before I could express my profound wonder, Lysias, in good humor, recommended, Licinia always comes here with her two sisters, and I was hoping you would be their escort. But, Lysias, I answered reluctantly, remembering my old marital status, you ought to understand that I am bound to Zelia. On hearing my reply, he laughed and added, That is all I needed to hear. No one wants to harm your sentiment of fidelity. However, I don't think marriage should make you neglect your social life. Don't you know how to be just someone's brother, Andre? I also laughed, embarrassed, and didn't know what to say. At that moment, we reached the entrance, where Lysias kindly got our tickets. Once inside, I noticed a large group of people standing around a graceful gazebo, where a small orchestra was playing light music. Flower-bordered paths extended in several directions before us, leading to the interior of the park. Observing my admiration for the songs being played, my companion explained, at the outer edges of the field, there are certain artistic expressions that meet the personal tastes of those who cannot yet understand divine music. But in the center, there is universal and sublime music, sanctified art par excellence. Indeed, after we had walked down a few pleasant pathways, each flower seeming to possess its own kingdom, I began to hear a marvelous harmony filling the air. On earth there are small groups that worship fine music, whereas the multitudes prefer popular music. Here, however, it was the opposite. The center of the field was crowded. I had already seen numerous gatherings of people in the colony, and I had felt in awe at the meeting that our ministry had dedicated to the governor, but what I saw now exceeded everything that had astonished me up to this point. The cream of Nasalar's society displayed itself magnificently. It was neither luxury nor excess of any kind that made the scene so splendid and marvelous. It was the natural expression of it all, simplicity blended with beauty, pure art, and life without artifice. The women showed extremely refined taste, without any excess jewelry that could detract from the divine simplicity. Large trees, unlike any of those known on earth, adorned, illuminated, and sheltered areas. There were not only affectionate couples lingering along the flowery pathways, there were also groups of ladies and gentlemen enjoying themselves in animated, worthwhile, and constructive conversation. Although I felt sincerely humbled by my own insignificance before that most select assembly, I understood the silent message of affinity in all the eyes that met mine. I heard talk concerning the physical circles, but I never detected even the slightest trace of malice or accusation characteristic of incarnate people. The discussions were about love, intellectual refinement, scientific research, and uplifting philosophy, but all the comments were positive and belonged to the higher sphere of mutual understanding, without any clash of opinions. I noticed that the wisest of them restrained the vibrations of their intellectual power, while the less endowed tried to raise theirs in order to acquire the gifts of higher knowledge. In numerous conversations I heard references to Jesus and the gospel, and what impressed me most was the prevailing note of joy in all the discussions. Nobody remembered the master with negative vibrations of useless sorrow or unjustified despondency. Jesus was remembered by all of them as the supreme instructor of visible and invisible terrestrial organizations. He was full of understanding and kindness and was also conscious of the energy and vigilance necessary to preserve order and justice. That optimistic gathering fascinated me. Right before my very eyes were the consecration of the hopes of a great many truly noble thinkers of earth. Deeply awed by the sublime music, I heard Lysias say, Our musicians act in harmony to absorb rays of inspiration from the highest planes, and earth's great composers are sometimes brought to spheres such as ours, where they receive melodic expressions. They then transmit them to human ears, 
adorning the themes received via their own genius. The universe, André, is full of beauty and sublimity. The external and shining spark of life has its origin in God. However, the attendant from assistance wasn't allowed to continue. We were met by a graceful group. Licinia and her sisters had arrived, and we had to attend to the imperatives of amiable socialization.